Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you know that this is my mini-series, my Back to Basics mini-series within my larger deep dive into the Thoth system. The system created by Lady Frida Harris and Aleister Crowley, and then the iterations thereof. And yes, I consider it a system. I consider it a system separate from the uh, Tarot de Marseille, separate from the uh, Continental Tarots, and even separate from the Smith-Waite deck and its iterations. Yeah, and yes, the Smith-Waite deck and the Harris Crowley deck both arose out of the context of the Order of the Golden Dawn, but they're different enough for me to be considered separate systems within the overarching system of Tarot, if that makes sense. So friends, this again is my back to basics, which to me means I'm doing a petite spread. Now, if you know me, I like to sling a whole mess of cards on the table and read them together. I've limited myself. I've limited myself to three tarot cards and two oracle cards for one spread, and I think it's been beneficial. And it, so I'm going to continue with this mini-series a little longer than I had expected. Um, and even my overarching dive into the thought system has opened my eyes and my heart, I think, to the system created by Lady Frida Harris and Aleister Crowley, because I've understood, I've understood, I've understood a new level of significance for the system and the usefulness of it and the beauty of it. And I hope I've, I'm translating and transmitting some of that understanding to you. And I hope you find it beneficial as well. So friends, I've really got a petite little spread all set up for us. But before we get to it, I'd like to take a look at the title for this week's video. Yeah, I called this week's video the bigger person because one of my friends on Facebook posted a meme and I'm usually not so great with memes. Um, and this one I found a little problematic. Let me read the meme for you directly. It said, be the bigger person is bullshit advice. My bigness is not determined by my capacity to quietly absorb bullying, degradation, or abuse. Now, I agree. The point of our lives is not to absorb bullying, degradation, and abuse. But nor is that a definition of being the bigger person. If you ask me, doing that is not being the bigger person, it's being the smaller person. For me, being the bigger person is not absorbing the other person's negativity, but rather allowing that negativity to bounce off me and seeing the person and the pain that person is in and working with that understanding. That's being the bigger person. It's not absorbing their problems. It's rather allowing their problems to fly past me, to bounce off me and to see through those problems because would a healthy, happy person be doing these things? Would a healthy, happy person bully, denigrate, or abuse another person? No. So being the bigger person is being able to see through that bullshit. And that's why I chose this title, because I think that's the direction this week's spread happens to be going in. So friends, here we go. We're about to look at the spread. What I'll do is I will first show you the whole spread. And then just in case you're new here, I will give you a quick breakdown, a quick rundown of what you have just seen. And then we'll take the spread into two bits, read those two bits, and we'll be on. Um, now, maybe you don't know, hopefully you do know, you don't have to watch this video in one sitting. Now, this is not one of my larger videos, my longer videos, but still, you can break this down into bits. Watch it in pieces. It's fine. Um, and before we get into it, I would like to say thank you. I'd like to say thank you to all of you who have already hit that thumbs up button and to all of you who comment below. That interaction is wonderful for me. Also, to those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much. Thank you, especially because your subscriptions, your th interactions 
bring the channel in front of the eyes of people who might otherwise not have seen it and who might get benefit from it. Yeah, of course, the channel appears in front of somebody it doesn't mean that they have to watch the videos, but if they have the opportunity to check it out and see if they're, they like what they see, you have given that opportunity to them. So thank you very much. So friends, here we are, ready to look at the spread. Here it is. The spread you just saw, again, had three cards on the top from the uh, deck, which is called the Thoth deck. Um, and those three cards are positional cards. I mean, this is a positional spread, and I don't often read positionally on my channel, but this is a positional spread, which means that each card responds to a specific prompt. Now, the first card is the significance of the response to the question, how can we live our lives more intentionally in the coming week? The second card is the challenge, and the challenge could be either positive or negative, something we're striving for or something that could be standing in our way. The third card is advice. And then below, we have two cards from an Oracle deck, a wonderful Oracle deck called the, uh, mm, the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. That's the ticket. The Oracle of the Radiant Sun, which is a, which is an um, astrologically based Oracle deck. And it's just wonderful. And I found using this with the Thoth deck and using also my I Ching Oracle decks with the Thoth deck all play out very, very nicely. So friends, that's what you just saw. What we're going to do is we're going to split this spread in half. We'll look at the three cards on, on the top and then we'll look at the three, two cards on the bottom and we'll be done. Let's start off with the three cards on the top. Here they are again. From left to right, you saw we had the Two of Cups, the Six of Cups, and the Four of Discs. A very interesting combination, yeah? All very receptive suits to the Tarot. All small cards, right? No major arcana, no court cards. So this is a very back to basics within the back to basics spread, I think. Um, and we start off with the Two of Cups, a beautiful card, an absolutely lovely card with this very small version of the Thoth Tarot. Now this one is a little, might be a little difficult to find on AGM, oh, I'm sorry, on uh, the internet. It's published by, this one was published by US Games actually. This is the deck which has the three original Meguses in it. Now the Thoth deck, when it was first published, as far as I know, my understanding is that there were three versions of the Megas by Lady Frida Harris, which were included. Now, and that's really the reason why I tracked down this deck, because I like the other two Meguses and I shuffle those two Meguses in with the, the one that we're most used to um, when I use this particular deck. But this is not a, not a Megas and it's the Two of Cups, which is titled Love, right? And the association here is Venus in Cancer, which is not a, nat a natural fit for me when associating astrology with the cards, but I'm opening myself up to the system that was, that was um, chosen, I should say, by the Order of the Golden Dawn. Now, previous systems associated different astrology with the cards. The Order of the Golden Dawn chose this system. So it's a fairly relatively modern uh, association, and I prefer the more antique associations. I prefer uh, associating with the traditional decanates, which are in trines, trine, which are uh, triplicities, which are in of uh, triplicities. And if you want to know what that is, let me know in the comments below. I'll get into it. I've talked about it previously. But here we have again, the Two of Cups associated with love, Venus in Cancer. Venus is the planet of love, right? And 
People who have Venus in Cancer tend to be nurturing and protect protective and self-protective. They're conscious and yet they're con cautious, I'm sorry, not conscious, cautious and also fertile. So there's a desire for safety, but there's also a desire for creativity, for nurturing, for caring for others and for fertility, for growing stuff. All very Venusian aspects within the Cancer, um, let's call it a house, right? And this card is all about the harmonious coming together, especially of opposing elements. It's harmony and peace. And doesn't this card look like a supreme image of peacefulness? We have the two fish, we've got lotuses, very abundantly pouring forth water. Yeah, we have one lotus above pouring into the, onto the fish, who is, it receives the water also in another lotus below, and that goes into two lotus cups on the sides. It's just a lovely, harmonious, balanced, peaceful looking image. The colors as well. Here, each may have to sacrifice a little bit of their own will to move forward. That might be a possibility. And you know that when Crowley points to our giving up a little bit of a will, that a little bit of our will, that's a big thing for him. Yeah, he's all about will. Love under the law, under the law. Love under will. He thinks love is important, but over love is will, our willpower. So his allowing for a little bit of letting go of some of that ultimately important will is significant. And again, Crowley says love is the law. Love under will. Here we are asked to drive back to unity from which manifestation has arisen. Now, when we think of the universe, what do, one way of understanding the beginning of the universe, scientifically and spiritually, is the separation of the one into the many, right? Scientists might call that the Big Bang. We might be calling them Big Bangs now, but one separating into the infinite, the singular the singularity separating into the infinite. So this card is asking us to move in the opposite direction, to move back towards the unity from which manifestation has arisen, to join together. And we might have to give up a little bit in order to accomplish that. That is the significance for this coming week. But remember, we also have Venus in Cancer, so it doesn't mean that we become victims. Now we, can ha we have the opportunity for some self-preservation, some protection of self while we nurture others and, and join with others at the same time. And I think that's important because that's, well, we'll get to that later on. Let's move on to the challenge. What is the challenge? And I think this is a positive challenge. Yeah, there is the potential for a little bit of unease within that two of cups, isn't there? When we join with our opposite and we have to, we're asked to give up a little bit of our will, that doesn't sound like a, an entirely joyful, happy thing. But that is the challenge. The challenge is the six of cups, which is pleasure. And Pleasure is associated with the sun in Scorpio. Full disclosure, Scorpio is my rising sign. My uh, sun sign is Leo, fire, fixed fire. My ascending is Scorpio, fixed water. Yeah, so those two are an interesting thing to be paired up with each other. And bringing them together could very well be the work of the Two of Cups, right? Where we bring the opposites, fire and water, together. 
So here we have again the sun in Scorpio. And people who have this, their sun in Scorpio tend to be perceptive, magnetic, secretive. They might have an over interest in death, but death in the transformative sense. Death as the ending of one thing to transform into or to become the next. Sexuality is also important for people in Scorpio. And this card is associated with things like, interestingly, ease, harmony, and diplomacy. So we have that, that emphasis again of harmonious atmospheres. And in order to achieve that, we're here we're asked for diplomacy. This is a card of steady increase. It's emotional renewal and emotional regeneration. It's the healing card. Crowley says to think of the summer sun on the ocean on holiday. Now, when you go out to the ocean, when you go out on holiday and you, you sit in and you observe the sun with that refreshing, cool breeze from the ocean, that kind of pleasure. Pleasure can be increased by sharing it, though. We're not asked here to hoard the pleasure, to overindulge in it by, in isolation, but sharing it increases it. And on the tree of life, this six is the midpoint. It's the uh, sephira of uh, Tiferet, which joins the ace in Kether with the nine in uh, Yesod. So it would join the ace of cups to the nine of cups, which is the um, ultimate of happiness cards, especially, especially in this deck, but also in the Smith White deck, right? Okay, you might be saying, no, 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 the Ten of Cups is the ultimate in happiness cards. Um, and that might be a little bit more so for the Smith Waite deck, but for the Crowley deck, the Nine seems to be the pinnacle. Ten is where we get to that tipping point of, eh, we could go either way, right? The Nine in the Crowley deck is the ultimate of happiness. And so here we, we're joining the beginnings and the culmination here in the heart with the six. This is pleasure on the way to ultimate happiness. So that is the challenge. The challenge here is to be diplomatic, but relish the joy of being who we are and where we are. Find the pleasure of that. Yeah? And so what is the advice? The advice here is, now we've got another sun in this card. This is the Four of Discs, which is titled Power. The advice is to find our power, right? And this is sun in Capricorn. Um, now, an interesting thing with sun in Capricorn, if, if we think of the triplicities, yeah, um, associated with the Tarot, the second decanate of every sign would also bring in a complement and a detriment, depending on whether the card is upright or reversed. The third decanate would imply, would also carry with it, I should say, would also carry with it um, a, an exaltation and a fall. These are all zodiacal terms, or astrological terms, I should say. So here, the... Uh, Sun being in Capricorn is an echo of the complement for the Sagittarius decanate of Leo, which would be the second decanate, which could be associated with the Four of Wands, which is a, another card of power. Yeah? It's the card of the power of fire, but this is the Four of Discs. Which is interesting. So we bring in a, we could bring in a little bit of that Sagittarius decanate of Leo, the mutable aspect of fixed fire here into the reading of the four of discs. Now, people with their sun in Capricorn um, are ambitious, right? They want 
to move up in the world. They want to succeed. They're willing to work with anybody in order to climb to the top of the mountain or as close to the top of the mountain as they can get. Um, they're diligent. Yeah, they work hard, like I said. And uh, so we have that in the four of discs as well. And we have the sun in Capricorn there, energizing Capricorn. So for Crowley, this is the card of manifestation, integrity, and character. Yeah, it's getting the work done, having all the tools to get the stuff done that we want to get done, but also having the character to maintain the, our truth while we do that. To do so ethically and morally and being who we are. This is the card for organizing and making arrangements as well. Now, we've got all these tools to work with. We've got the four elements to work with. We want to organize them. We want to make arrangements for their implementation. We want to be able to know, to negotiate, to form agreements and accords. That's emphasized again, which we had that a little taste of that in the diplomacy aspect of the Six of Cups card. And we have a taste of that from the Two of Cups card as well. Negotiating, bringing things together, making agreements. This is not a, this is not stationary, but it's work in mo motion. And yeah, we can gain uh, money, we can gain influence with this card as well. But that's not the ultimate point, I don't think. It's bringing things together to make things work, to find our power. And we also want to bring our relationships into right relationship. Then the ne necessary power to do the work we want to do will be gained. Right? So all of those echoes between these three cards from the significance card of joining with the opposite in the Two of Cups, right? Um, we might have to give up a little bit, we, but we want to join in love. Which doesn't mean that we, that if we are, we're joining together with somebody who we disagree with, that doesn't mean that we make that other person's ideas right. Especially if that other person is, has made those decisions and has come to those conclusions from a place of pain, from anger, from disappointment from um, the desire for revenge, if they've come to those ideas from that platform, from that basis, we don't want to, we don't want to give energy to those ideas or those opinions, but we want to be able to join together with the other person in a basis of loving accord from which this whole universe has sprung. Right? Love under will. That is, the, that is the significance for how we can move through this coming week. We want to move back towards the unity that this entire universe has sprung from. And the challenge is to do that and maintain our pleasure, to maintain our high vibrational stat stat uh, state, to do that work and maintain our satisfaction and pleasure, to be able to join the head and the, to join all of the chakras perhaps, to join the unity of self as we do the work of love. Of being the, which is to me, being the bigger person. Right? Be bigger. Be the bigger person than the other person. And so again, the advice, what, what is our advice? It's to Negotiate, join together, 
use all of the elements that are available to us to do that alchemy, to achieve power. But the power is really by bringing our relationship into right relationship. And if we can do that, then we have even more um, resources for us to take advantage of and find our true power. Does that make sense? And so we will therefore be bigger. Yeah? Be bigger. So, friends, we have two cards for advice. And I think they really are advice. Um, both neg positive and negative. Be careful, do this. Yeah? So let's take a look at those two cards right now. The two cards we had for advice at the bottom from the Oracle of the Radiant Sun were from left to right. Number two, which is resistance. That doesn't sound very fun. And number seven, which is companionship. Now, these cards are not ordered from one to, for example, 54. Maybe it's 58. But rather, these the cards are ordered within each uh, for each planet. So, you saw that card two was Mercury in Taurus. So, for the Mercury cards, there will be cards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for each of the zodiacal signs. And then the next one after Mercury would be Venus. And then for the Venus cards, there would be start again from 1 to 12, if that makes sense. So, first card is number two, resistance. And on the face you see that we have Mercury in Taurus. So that's why we've got a bull there, right? Taurus. And the bull statue is immovable. This is not a living bull, this is a statue of a bull. And it is an immovable statue. Which is a little bit like Taurus on steroids. <laughs> Taurans are, tend to be stubborn, tend to be resistant to taking stimulation and pushes from the outside. And when they do feel pushed, when they do feel um, messed with, then they get even more stubborn, right? So that's why Tor this card is probably um, entitled Resistance. We're looking at that aspect of Taurus. There's also a shrub there, right? The shrub is blown about. You can see that at the top, yeah? The shrub is blown over, not blown over, but the top is bending in the wind. And there's a parrot there. Yeah? And the parrot is chattering. The wind is blowing and Taurus is there, immovable. So, you can think of the wind being Mercury, the messenger of the gods flying by, and this torrent going standing there so rigid and stiff. So this card points to thinking and decisions allied to the practical, the material, and are of common sense. Those things are asked of us, yeah? To think and make decisions that are practical, that are material, focused on the stuffness around us, as well as those which are based on, on common sense. We were asked for good concentration and a mind toward steady progress. Remember Capricorn, which was the advice card for the three card spread, yeah? Steady progress. Being able to ignore distractions is beneficial to us and not reacting to them by, by stiffening up and I'm not gonna move until this, until I'll quiet down, right? That's not what we're asked for. We're asked to let it blow over or blow past. We wanna be careful of obstinance here. It's okay to enjoy the comforts and pleasures of life. That's a good thing. Remember we had that for the Six of Cups pleasure? Enjoy the pleasures of life. 
keep an eye to finances. We don't want to overspend while we take while we enjoy our uh, pleasures, but we do want to enjoy the pleasures and be careful of becoming obstinate, which could be a, a reaction to distraction. Sounds like good advice, especially considering the three cards we had above. Now, the next card we had here was seven, companionship, right? Seven is, Libra is the seventh sign in the zodiac, so this is the moon. So the seventh card in the moon series, which is companionship, the moon and Libra. And here you can see four friends linking arms. And we can also see a, an image of two hands they're grasping, right? And there's a pomegranate there. The pomegranate is the symbol of the sun. Remember, we had the sun as a very significant planet for the spread above. There were two instances of the sun springing up. We have the sun in Scorpio and the sun in Cancer. So here we have that sun bursting forth, which is for fertility and growth. We're, the advice is to allow growth here making steady progress, which we had, again, in the resistance card. So the significance of this card here is um, to care for the feelings of others. And yet it's still okay to um, risk some selfishness, which, remember, with the Venus in Cancer, yeah, a little bit of that self-protectiveness is okay. Protect yourself. Like I said, it's not about absorbing the, uh, what, the bullying, the deg degradation, or the abuse of others. It's not about that. Nah? We, we have good boundaries. We don't, we let that stuff either bounce off or fly past us. Like the wind flying past that bush there in, at the top, that chattering pat parrot. We let it go by. So we, we're, it's okay to risk some selfishness in this card, but there's no need to be, and there's, and there's no need to be a doormat. Care should be taken not to give in just to get along. We want to give in, but we don't want to give in without any practical re, good reason, right? If there are things that are, that giving in to some things, it would be negative, would be detrimental to ourselves and perhaps even to the other person. So we don't want to give in to everything and be walked over. That's not taking the high road. That's not being the bigger person. That's being the doormat. We don't want to do that. So we don't give in just to get along. We find ways to get along, but not by blindly, stupidly giving in. We want to take time to prepare and enjoy the environment of good taste and beauty here. Again, a remember to take pleasure, enjoy the pleasure. Our beautiful Create and enjoy beautiful homes and beautifully, beautifully emotionally fulfilling relationships. We want to create them and enjoy them. So this week seems to be all about relationships and the power that can come from that. And we don't want to just join with those people who we are already joined with, which is wonderful. It's wonderful. But we want to find a way to join with those who seem to be opposite to us. And if you're in the United States or you know somebody in the United States and we think of the current political situation, the current social situation, yeah, politics has really divided us socially in the United States and in other places as well, but particularly for me in the United States. There are people who are playing politics like we play sports, where we pick a side and we, our team is the only team that is right and I will only support our team. And there are reasons for that, but 
that's not a real, that's not a good reason for us to, for example, if I'm a, a, a Chicago White Sox fan and you're a, I'm, I'm really not good with sports. You're a San Francisco um, uh, Giants fan, and I think they're in the same league. If they're, <laughs> if if I meet you and our team, I know our teams are opposing each other, then I have to hate you, and you have to hate me. That's a stupid way to live life. It's a friggin' game. It's only a game. And. The teams we identify with or the team, no, the teams that we support. If we identify with those teams and we think that those teams are somehow part of us, that's where the problem is. And it's the same way with politics. If, yeah, we might want to support a bunch of one party, for example, a bunch of Democrats, and we might wish that some of the people on the other side of the aisle were not successful in their uh, in the election that doesn't mean that I am only a Democrat or you are only a Republican he is only, she is only a Republican there are fully formed people within those parties and sometimes people in both parties do nasty things. Sometimes people in both parties have nasty policies. Sometimes people in both parties have some okay ideas too. And then there are the people who are claiming to be um, supporters of one particular presidential candidate who um, are under this weird red banner of MAGA, which are very extreme, and yet there are real people in there too. So, the challenge here is to find pleasure in the act of realizing that the person in what we think of as the opposite party, the opposite group, who is in opposition to me, we see the human there. And that doesn't mean I need to absorb whatever negativity I see coming at me from them. It means that I see the human in there and I find a way to unite with that person on whatever level I can possibly unite with them at. And it doesn't mean, again, being walked over like a doormat. None of this spread is asking for that. And that is not about being the bigger person. It's not by letting them walk over us or by absorbing all of what we don't like about them into our being. By, isn't about, what did I say? It's not about um, giving in just to get along. It's about finding the connection that is there because there is no separation in this universe. If you love Biden and you hate Trump, for example, there is no separation between either of those and you. If you love Trump and you hate Biden, there is no separation between any of those and there is no separation between you and Trump and you and Biden. The challenge is to find a way to love the person within whatever thing you want to accuse them of. Right? That's what this week's spread is pointing to. And if we can do that, what do we do? What do we get? We get power. That is the power point. That is being, becoming the bigger person. We become incredibly powerful that way. Does that make sense? If it does, let me know in the comments below. If it does not, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And friends, if you want a, um, a reading from me, my email address is below, the, the hanged man in the moon at gmail.com. 
I don't even know my own email address. You can see it down there. The Hanged Man in the Moon at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. We'll get you a reading. Or let me know in the comments below. I want a reading. We'll connect. Also, if you want either of these decks, um, I'll put a link to the, a similar deck on Amazon for this one. Yeah, there's a similar deck. I don't think they have the three mega decks available commonly, um, but I'll find something similar to this one if you want it. It's smaller than the other Thoth decks. Um, it's not a mini, but it is smaller. It's a little bit bigger than bridge size. Um, and then there's this deck, which is bridge size, uh, and I'll have a link to this Oracle deck as well. Well, you can see, yeah, Let's, let me show you this. There you see, bridge size and the smaller Thoth Tarot. Still, pretty easy to shuffle. Anyways, here we go. Thank you, friends. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for walking through this spread with me. I hope it was a benefit to you. It's been a benefit to me. Um, and now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.